Let's look at an example dealing with the simple harmonic motion of a pendulum. You want the pendulum in your clock that you're building to complete a period exactly once every second. How long should that pendulum be? So what we've got going on here, of course, is the pendulum. There's some mass on the end of it, swinging back and forth so through some angle theta. And we are wondering what the length of this pendulum will be, usually denoted with a lowercase l. We know that the period has to be one second. You might be thinking to yourself, well, how am I ever going to have enough information? I don't know how far the pendulum is being swung. Um, I don't know the mass of the bob on the end. So how am I ever going to be able to figure out the length? Well, let's just go to our formula sheet. We know that the period of a pendulum can be modeled by 2 pi times the square root of L over G. So it turns out we don't need any more information, as long, of course, if we're dealing with small angles. And clocks typically do deal with small angles. So if we want the period to be 1 second, this has to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of whatever L is, divided by G. And I assume this clock is going to be on Earth, so let's go with 9.1 meters per second squared. So let's bring 2 pi to the other side. So we've got to have 1 second divided by 2 pi. This has to be equal to the square root of L. Let's just take this whole thing and square it. This has to be equal to L over 9.81. So now I just rearranged things before I punched anything in my calculator. So I could make a final statement for L that has to be equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. This has to be times 1 second over 2 pi, which has to get squared. I could even be a little more clear about how I might type this into my calculator. I've got 9.81 meters per second squared. 1 squared is still just 1. It'll be 1 second squared. And then, of course, the 2 pi has to be squared. So 2 squared is 4. And then we've got pi squared. So let's type that in our calculator. We've got 9.81 times 1, so we actually don't need to do that, we need to divide by 4 and also by pi squared. So that gives us a length of 0 0.2485 meters. Um, just a quick note on our units, of course, the second squared and second squared cancelled out. Pi has no units, so we're just left with meters. Let's leave our answer, of course, in... Well, okay, good question on sig digs here. The only number we were given in our question was one. There was one period that we want, or one rotation every second. So our period was one second. Now, you might think to yourself, well, I guess just one significant figure. But we wanted it to be exactly that. So this is a calculation for the most precision possible for to get a period of one second. So we actually can leave this as having any number of sig digs that we want. We can say we could even do more, except for that we might have trouble getting um, that kind of accuracy out of when we actually go to build our pendulum. So we can say that the pendulum should be this long. And let's just convert it to centimeters for ease of use. 24.85 centimeters should be the exact length of our pendulum.